What's going on everyone? Crush back here with another video. Hope everyone's doing great today. I know I am. And wow, we got another Last of Us review inbound along with the summary of the episode. And yeah, this um this episode wasn't quite exactly what I expected. It was a little bit different. I have a little bit more criticism in this one, I'm gonna say that. But at the same time, I think it was a pretty good episode nevertheless. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get right on into it. So before we start this video off, I just want to say that tomorrow at about 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, I am actually going to be streaming The Last of Us Remastered tomorrow. I'm too cheap to buy the new version. And um, I was actually thinking about getting it, but John said that it wasn't worth it. And I I'm not paying $60 for something I already have. Fuck that shit, you know? So anyway, yeah, if y'all want to talk to me tomorrow, 6.30. Eastern Standard Time, Last of Us Remastered. I'll probably be playing a couple hours of it, and then for the rest of the week, most likely, I'll also be playing it around that time. So if y'all want to talk to me, if y'all want to vibe with me, if y'all want to say fuck funny ass fuck Mary Kills, if y'all want to say I have sex with the infected from The Last of Us, or I don't know, something crazy like that, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I, I get roasted quite a bit, and I do a lot of roasting, and it's a good time, you know, so y'all should definitely stop by if you're interested in that. But enough shameless promotions. Let's get on with this summary. So, yeah, this episode was really cool. It, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the longest episode in the whole series. This was one hour and 22 minutes. Granted, some of the episode was summaries and, you know, shit like that, so it was more like one hour and 12 minutes, but still, really cool episode, though. Really cool episode. Oh, and if you can't tell already by the video, there's going to be major spoilers for the episode so if you haven't seen the episode or if you haven't seen the game even if you have seen the game i still wouldn't suggest watching this video just because it's different than the game but anyway this is your warning y'all spoilers ahead and uh yeah if you watch past this then that's on you so getting on into the episode, we start out by seeing Joel and Ellie just wandering through a forest. We're seeing them walk around, kind of just talking a little bit about life before the pandemic. They have several different conversations, such as like such as how the pandemic started. Joel basically tells her that he believes that it was started because the cordyceps were in food and infected people that ate like milk, bread, shit like that, whatever was in, you know, the food supply. And then the pandemic basically went from there. We also got to see a little plane crash from a distance um which i mean eh, it, it was okay i guess the cgi was only okay i think it could have been a little bit better but it still wasn't a bad scene you got to see ellie excited and near the end of the first act in the episode as they're still walking down the path joel tries to get ellie to move more to the right side of the path so, so that she can miss a sight that joel thinks she shouldn't see and she basically says no fuck you i'll do whatever i want being the rowdy teenager she is which i can't blame her i was a rowdy teenager once i was pretty much exactly like that and she basically sees a graveyard where soldiers basically went full order 66 on a bunch of bunch of survivors that that they just didn't have room to store in the camps you know if the qz's were overcrowded apparently the soldiers would just take these people out in the middle of nowhere and just order 66 them not a pleasant sight not a pleasant sight it could have been worse though it's just skulls and crossbones stuff like that stuff you'd see hanging in front of a pirates of the caribbean pirate ship you know it, it wasn't that bad but still probably not the best thing to see and i forgot to mention a little bit before i think it was before i can't remember if it was before or after i'm pretty sure this was before but but in the first act they also they go to a little store or a restaurant type place i don't actually know what it was per se and joel's basically just looking for some supplies that he left behind a couple years ago and while he's looking for the supplies ellie's looking around the store just trying to see if there's anything she can salvage and she finds the basement slash cellar in the store and when she goes down to take a closer look at it she discovers an infected that was crushed in the rubble except it's not dead it's still alive but pretty much only the head and one arm can even move and she decides to take a closer look at the infected and and after i guess a couple of minutes of thinking in her head what she should do with the infected she first cut make gives it a little cut above its eye and then just stabs it in the head to kill it which i'm assuming partially was due to you know tess's death and her expression some anger which i can't blame her if homie was killed by an infected i would probably do the exact same thing you know it may be a little bit demented especially if you're a 14 year old and you know if you did that nowadays you'd be 
called probably Ted Bundy or Jeff the Killer or I don't fucking know Jeffrey Dahmer or something like that but but in The Last of Us you got to do what you got to do you know and I think it's just a little foreshadowing for how Ellie's toughening up throughout the series you know because in the first episodes she seems shocked that Joel beat the shit out of somebody and killed them and now she actually killed and infected herself so yeah she's definitely toughening up in the world and going places our little killer Ellie I'm so proud. But after the first act, we switch off of Joel and Ellie for a while, and we move on to Bill. And it starts off in the past again, which I, I feel like in each of these episodes, we're going to have flashbacks in the past, just seeing a little bit of what humanity looked like before the pandemic and we start by seeing soldiers evacuating people out of this neighborhood and we see bill hiding in a basement kind of like a conspiracy alex jones layer in the basement just trying to make sure the military can't find them looking at a whole bunch of old tv monitors watching the soldiers and when it's made clear that the soldiers can't find them he says something along the lines of yeah fuck the new world order i'm bill i'm badass and you can't control me when the soldiers leave he proceeds to loot the surrounding stores and and what i'm assuming is over the years he starts building a little fortress of solitude around his neighborhood kind of like superman's fortress of solitude he has a whole he has an electric fence he basically has unlimited resources he has a whole arsenal in his basement the guy is literally the definition of a one-man army and probably could fund a one-man army and still be fine on his own you know and after bill is clearly living his best life drinking as much wine as he wants eating however he would like basically making fun five-star organ grill meals for himself he ends up meeting this guy named frank now bill around his fortress of solitude he would set up trap primarily meant for zombies or or you know raiders people that would try and do him harm he set up traps just to protect himself you know a lot of these traps include trip wires where if you trip over the wire then a shotgun will just blast you in the head there's even one scene where bill's just chilling and then he hears like a little notification because apparently if you go too close to these traps then bill will hear a notification basically a little alarm but you won't and bill basically acts like it's his favorite tv show i don't know should we turn on the impractical joker should we t watch irresponsible twats on youtube no let's watch a zombie get blown in the head and i'm not gonna lie when i saw <laughs> Oh my god, when I saw Bill watching a zombie just get shot in the head by his own traps, and then after he hit a one-liner, dude... I'm not gonna lie, my boy Ron Swanson, Nick Offerman, that dude plays the perfect Bill. Like, the lines he was saying were just spot-on perfect, dude. And if y'all don't know who Ron Swanson is, he's part of Parks and Recs, and y'all should watch that show too, because it's also good. But anyway, he meets this guy named Frank, who was trying to get find his way to Boston, because I guess a QZ that he was at in Baltimore... Which, shout out Baltimore, man. We made, th we made this show, apparently. But yeah, he's coming from a QZ in Baltimore and trying to find his way to Boston and finds Bill's Fortress of Solitude. And I assume he was going there looking for help. But then he falls into one of Bill's traps, which was a big hole. And Bill sees him out there and he goes up to the hole. And first he asks him if he's armed. Frank says he's not. Then Bill eventually gains enough confidence in him where he drops a ladder, scans him with, I guess, a device he got from a soldier to see if he's infected and then frank convinced him to let him inside to get a meal and basically the two kind of hit it off from there they're bonding over dinner they're bonding over this piano that um your boy bill has in his house and and then after that uh it it becomes especially interesting let's just say that um if y'all don't know there was a i don't even know if this was confirmed in the video game we're going to be exploring this when i'm streaming the game obviously but i don't know if bill was actually gay like there were rumors that bill was gay in the video games but until today i don't believe it was confirmed maybe i'm wrong on that but i'm pretty sure it wasn't but yeah after this episode and after uh you know frank and bill were just kissing each other then you got to see both of them shirtless in bed that was a sight to see especially if you're a straight guy like me who, who just isn't particularly into other men kissing other men on the lips without shirts on let's just say that okay so while i personally wasn't really interested in all that i did like the relationship that bill and frank had it was honestly really wholesome seeing frank happy as hell 
uh, at the dinner table, getting to eat a nice meal, getting to drink some wine. It was just super wholesome, you know, and I, I was actually having a great time. I was really happy watching that scene. It was such a great scene, man. And then basically for most of the rest of the episode, you were just watching them bond. A couple years goes by and you see how Frank is more comfortable, even giving Bill orders, saying what he wants to happen with their little fortress of solitude and kind of having like a little couple fight, you know. And then after Frank says that they're having friends over, Bill seems very confused and not happy in the slightest about other people, you know, coming into his fortress of solitude. Doesn't want them in there. He doesn't want them in there. But Frank is basically saying how, you know, Bill should make friends with people and stuff like that. And until I actually saw who Frank was referring to, I had no idea who it could be. It could have been Johnny fucking Sins for all I know, <laughs> like surviving in the apocalypse. Just, you know, Johnny Sins... Johnny Sins, of course, has to survive in the apocalypse and still needs to have two billion jobs, okay? So for all I know, it could have been him, but in actuality, it was actually Tess and Joel that were invited to enter Bill's Fortress of Solitude. And it was nice seeing all four of them just having a nice outdoor meal together. It kind of reminds me of like an 80s lunch, like where, you know, adults sit at like a little table outside just in their front yard just chilling before any of today's bullshit happened you know life was i'm sure life was so much easier back then tess and frank eventually go inside the house and joel and bill talk a little bit and bill thinks that he doesn't need anything from joel he thinks that he's self-sustainable which i think for the most part he's right but then joel throws a few curveballs at him he's just like yeah that that fence isn't gonna last very long unless you get my stuff so let's just trade and then bill's eventually like all right whatever and then <laughs> and <laughs> um and then yeah that's apparently how um they met each other which i thought was really cool because we weren't given an in-depth answer for how joel and bill and tess even met up so i thought that was pretty cool you know that was something that i felt was missing from the video game and then after that scene we just see more of bill and frank when they're even older at this point it, it was I, I don't remember exactly how long it was. I think this was like 15 years into the future after, you know, they met Joel and Tess. But after another time jump, you can tell that both of them are much older. You can tell that Frank is in a wheelchair, not really able to do basic human functions. Like, he can't even open a pill bag. He's just struggling, I guess, to eat dinner as well. And he's struggling to even, I guess, pick up his glass of wine because he needs a straw to even drink and stuff like that. Bill seems all right. Bill seems pretty good still for his age but you can tell frank doesn't have very much time like he looks kind of shitty you know he just doesn't look like he's in the best condition so after a little while of us just seeing them old frank decides to pop a big question to bill he basically tells bill that he doesn't want to live for much longer i i don't remember if they actually said what disease frank had but apparently frank let me actually look real quick so after doing a little bit of googling apparently what frank has is something called a neurogen what what the hell does a how do people in how do people even pronounce these names nor come up with the name apparently it's called a neurodegenerative disease or a condition or whatever and according to google basically the nervous system stops working and there's no cure for it so which does make sense because i again they said in the show in the episode that whatever disease frank had there was no cure even before the pandemic began so yeah this is most likely it so because of this, Frank decides near the end of the episode that he wants to have one more good day with Bill and then basically commit suicide. Basically, the remainder of the episode before we cut back to Joel and Ellie is Frank wants to have one more good day with Bill. They start by waking up and then they go to a few places and then they end up getting married and they conclude the day off by frank and him having a nice dinner together drinking some wine and then and then at the end of the dinner frank insists that bill crush a whole bunch of pills into his wine and then he would just drink it and then pass out and die in bed and that does happen they share a few good lols together one more time just being boys you know and and then, yeah, the second to last scene we see with them is Bill is taking him upstairs and Frank wants to die in his bed next to Bill. 
and it, it's kind of it's really nice you know it's a really nice way to go out even if it is killing yourself you know i mean there's way worse ways you could die in the apocalypse let's be real and it's kind of like some romeo juliet shit which which i have my own opinions on it but like i, I still thought it was kind of nice you know and that's the last scene we see bill and frank together now cut back to joel and ellie we see joel and ellie near the final 15 minutes of the episode walking to bill's fortress of solitude and joel walks to the gate and there's a key code on there I, I don't remember what it's called a key lock yeah key lock and joel types in the password to get in and he and ellie both enter bill's fortress of solitude they're looking for bill and frank and Joel notices that the bedroom door is locked and Ellie discovers a note basically telling Joel that they both killed themselves and that they were both dead and that you know they could help themselves to whatever considering that considering that Joel's probably the only one that could gain access to the fortress of solitude without being electrified you know yeah it's it's kind of a tough ending you know not exactly the greatest um it's kind of sad that's what I'm, that's where i'm going with this i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying it's sad you know it's sad so joel and ellie they just gather up whatever they need they find a car key that's on top of the letter and they take showers they gather up any equipment that they need they take the car and then they end up going but not before ellie decides to get a 22 that she found in a, in a drawer which i think was frank's gun and then she puts in her bag without Jewel knowing about it. Because the whole episode, Ellie wanted a gun now that Tess is gone. But Jewel wasn't giving her one. So, you know, these fucking teenagers, man. They just never listen. Never listen. Which, again, I, I probably wouldn't have either. And then, yeah, the episode concludes with them driving away. They even have a little reference from the video game where Jewel's playing some music that he likes from back in the day. And they're kind of just vibing. And it looks like it's going to be a good way to end the episode for them, at least. They're going to find Tommy. And then we're going to just continue with the story from there, you know? Which, obviously, anyone that's played the video game knows that it's not quite that straightforward. There's obviously going to be a little bit more before they reach Tommy. But... For an episode like this, um, wow, there was a lot in it. There was a lot in it. Now that we're done with the summary, let me talk about what I thought with this episode. I'm kind of mixed. Um, it, it was still a really, really good episode. I, I had no complaints with the first part with Joel and Ellie in it, along with the first half of Bill and Frank. I thought that was really cool. I thought that... You know, the whole idea that Bill has basically this military base to himself for the first half of the episode is just really dope you know because that's just stuff you don't see and in the video game i mean bill you know bill's smart he knows how cars work and he knows how to get a car to start and he clearly knows what he's doing he's doing all right for himself but in this show this dude is like crack this guy's using cheat codes basically in the apocalypse this guy just this guy's like jeff bezos you know <laughs> he has everything he, he doesn't need nobody or nothing and i thought that how bill and frank met was really cool it was really sweet you know I, again i didn't care for the gay scenes i could have not seen that i kind of i'm not gonna lie i may or may not have just cut past that not because i have a problem with gay people just because i'm not into that and yeah i i'm i'm not into guys kissing okay that's lester b's job okay but yeah no um bill and frank it was a really sweet dynamic you know and it was just really really nice and really sweet and sad at the same time but the only issue i really have with this episode as a whole is <sighs> It's really debatable, I feel, because this episode was really good, just like the last two. But in the game, when you first meet Bill, I, I don't really care about the personality change, because he's a lot tougher in the video game than he is in the show. The only real criticism I have with this episode is that I really wanted to see Bill fight. I really wanted to see Bill, Joel, and Ellie go into a high school and basically battle a whole bunch of zombies, you know? Because Bill's a badass fighter, let's be real. If you can build all those traps, and who knows what he can do in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know? Like, the dude is... The dude's Rambo, let's be real. Ron Swanson, my boy, is Rambo, okay? Kind of wanted Joel and him to fight together. I, I, I thought it would have been really cool. Now, I do think that they did Frank justice and that at least they gave him a happy ending. And they gave Bill a happy ending, you know? Because Bill was just a miserable, fat motherfucker, let's be real, okay? He was not happy in the video game, so... The fact that he gets a happy ending, even though, you know, it's not the best way to go out, is still nice, you know? It's it's a good way to conclude the Bill arc in The Last of Us, you know? But I just wish that there was a little bit of action, though, because 
We, we really got no action besides the one raider scene where Bill really didn't do much besides maybe shooting one or two raiders. His traps killed them all, you know, and we just didn't really get to see that, you know, the gruesome traps blowing people up that much. I mean, we got to see the raiders get, you know, burnt alive like a burnt piece of toast and we got to see one zombie get shot in the face from a trap, but I still think it would have been a little bit better if we had more action in this episode, like when they go in the high school again. You know, I, I thought that would have been cool, you know. I thought it would have been a little bit better, but as a whole in this episode, I don't think it was bad. It, it's not game-changing. I mean, yeah, it's really not game changing because either way, Joel and Ellie still get the car in the end. But I think there's just more, a little too much dialogue. That's just the only thing. Again, the episode told a great story, which The Last of Us is meant to be a story game, you know? Like, the video game is meant to be a story game more than an action game. I get it, you know? Um, which is why I hate The Last of Us Part 2. I think that shit's terrible because the story is just good dog shit, you know? But. Still, I, I don't know, I just felt like Bill could have just been a little bit more badass, you know, uh, and really showed us his full fighting extent, you know. That's really the only complaint I have. Um, obviously, there was a whole bunch of other changes, you know, with the scenery and stuff like that, but I don't care about that. That's fine, you know, it's fine. And I like how I like how Joel and Ellie are getting closer. This episode set us up really nicely for the next episode, which the next episode, I'm sure, is going to have a lot of combat to make up for this episode. Um, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably shouldn't be watching the show, or you couldn't watch the show, but you might not want to watch the video game then, because, you know, spoilers or whatever, but, yeah, um, there's gonna be a lot of gunfights in the next, in the next episode, I'm sure, and, um, yeah. Overall, great episode. Can't wait for the next week. Let me know what you guys think. That's really all I have to say this time. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed. If you agree with me or disagree, hope you still enjoyed regardless. And remember, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. And I'll see y'all next week. Peace.